my friends and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little different. It is not WW related. So if you're here for WW content, you might want to skip this one. We all have lives outside of WW and you know if you watch my channel that one of my favorite things to do is craft. I like to craft, I like to sew. So, so get it. Kim over to Girl and Her Phone and I thought it would be a lot of fun because we both like to craft and we both love Dollar Tree. We thought it would be a lot of fun to take some Dollar Tree items and that we had exactly the same and each repurpose them into a craft that suits our personalities. So this isn't a competition. It's not who did it better because they're probably going to be very different because we have very different decorating styles and very different personalities. So we just thought we would show you two different ways to take a Dollar Tree item and kind of make it a little more high end, a little nicer looking. Not that there's anything wrong with these items because they are adorable. They just don't fit into my decor. So after you're done watching my video, I have Kim's video link in the description box below. Go over and check out what she did with these dollar store pumpkins. I can't wait to see what you did with these dollar store pumpkins. I don't know, I keep saying I think they're gonna be so similar because as different as Kim and I are, we have so many things in common. So we're just gonna to have to wait and see. So I am gonna turn you around and I am gonna show you what I'm going to be using, I think. I have not done this, this is all in my head. And if you've watched my cooking videos, you know what happens when things are in my head. I have an idea of what I wanna do with it, but I haven't practiced it. So we're gonna kind of be doing it on the fly. I'm gonna show you what I'm intending to use and I'll probably pull more stuff out too, but let's just get started on so the that. The items that Kim and I decided to use were these two cute little pumpkins from Dollar Tree. They're on little stands. This one says, welcome friends. This one says, hello fall. And as cute as they are, they just really don't go with my decor. So I'm just gonna change them up a bit. I have a few ideas and we'll see how they turn out. I also have some Mod Podge that I'm gonna use. I have some Raffia I might make a bow with. I have some Jute Twine I might make a bow with. And I have scrapbook paper. I fell in love with this. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it looked fallish, but it also looked high end and would really fit nicely in my family room. And also this one, these are the two I'm gonna coordinate with. So let's get started and see what I can come up with. First thing I wanna do is I wanna take off the labels from the back and I wanna take off the bow and the little sunflower. So I'm gonna use my little heat gun. I completely forgot I had this. This is left over from my card making days when I used to emboss. This is kind of an old school one. I don't even really know if it's gonna work. The ones they have out nowadays are much more powerful. I already have it on my birthday wish list. I told, oh no, this is working. I might not need that new one. I was gonna say, I told Doug it was on my birthday wish list, but this is working great, except the fact that it's all tangled up. There we go, now you can see a little bit better. I'm just heating it up. And look at that, it peels off nice and clean. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the front. Excuse my head. This is my first time ever, like really filming down in my craft room. So I'm not sure about the lighting. I'm not sure about the angles. So you're just gonna have to bear with me. I'd like to try to get this off in one piece and hopefully save it and reuse it for another DIY. coming slowly but surely. Woo! There you go. Look at that. And same with the bow. I'm just going to heat that up. And then I'm going to do 
do the same thing with the other pumpkin. And you don't need to see me do that because you saw me do it once. So I will be back when I'm ready to start the next step. That popped off so easy on that second one. So this is actually going to be the back only because I don't want to have to worry about sanding it down and there's some glitter and it's textured. So this is going to be the front. But I don't want this to show on the back. So what I'm going to do, the first thing is I'm going to take these, hopefully, I'm going to have to heat that and take it off the stand. I want to take them off the stand, that one came right off, but I want to keep the stands because we are going to use those again. And I just want to cover the front, which is going to be our back, in brown craft paper just to give it a nice finished look. So I am just going to trace this on the brown craft paper and I get this right at Dollar Tree. Now this one I'm going to have to melt the glue a little bit. Once again, getting my handy dandy heat tool out. Like I said, this is one I had around. The newer ones are so sleek looking. They, they're like long and they look like a, look like a big fat cigar. And they have like a little stand and everything. Probably much, you know, higher end than this one. But in my world, you work with what you have. If it ain't broke, you don't fix it and you don't buy a new one. At least that's how I feel. I'm pretty frugal. Okay, it's starting to come. I'm going to shut the camera off, get this off of here, and be right back. I cut out my pumpkins out of the craft paper, and I'm just going to use a glue stick all over the surface to adhere the craft paper. You can use spray adhesive, you can use Mod Podge. I am going to use Mod Podge for the front because I want a really nice finish. But like I said, this is just the back. Nobody's going to see the back where I'm going to put this. I'm going to put this on a table that's kind of up against a wall. But I just feel like it gives it a nice finished look. Now, do not worry if you did not cut it properly and some of it is hanging over because we can just trim that edge off, not a big deal. So it just makes it look a little bit finished. Now we need to do the same thing for this side, but with our scrapbook paper. I chose the two different ones because I want them to coordinate. I just have to figure out, I think I'm gonna use this one for the big pumpkin in the back. So I am just going to place that on there. I lost my pencil. Trace around. And like I said, just like with the brown craft paper, if it's not perfect, it's okay because we can easily sand or trim. And I would rather have it a little too big then have it too short. Whoops. That's the only problem. The craft paper got in the way of me tracing it. And then we're just going to do the other one. I'm going to trim this one before I trace it so I don't run into the same problem. And if you didn't want to trim it, you could use a piece of sandpaper. Of course, my little tiny craft scissors are upstairs in the kitchen. Because why would they be down in my craft room, right? Right. There we go. we are going to cut these out and then start the Mod Podge. Grease is averted. Thank goodness I noticed. Let me give you a little tip. I want this paper on this side and this has a definite shape to it. It's not symmetrical. 
So I, you have to make sure you trace it the right way. So I want it to be, I want this side and this paper on it. So put the paper on the side and flip them together at once and then you'll know that it's going to be right. And then that way it also helps with the overhang of the brown craft paper. So luckily I figured that out before I started cutting. See, look, I craft it just like I cook. Hot mess. So now we're gonna get these cut out and then the Mod Podge will begin. So before we start Mod Podging, the word fall came through a little bit on the back of this one and it's a little bit bumpy. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and just sand that down. I'd like it to be as smooth as possible when I put the paper down. Although if it's not quite perfect, it's okay because it just gives it that little bit of texture and that little bit of vintage aged look. So I'm just gonna put some of my Mod Podge in a bowl. We had a party one time and the caterer brought like 10,000 of these styrofoam bowls and it makes me crazy because nothing is worse than styrofoam for the environment. I don't want to just throw them away because that's wasteful. I, I, I don't know what to do with them so I just use them for paint and Mod Podge but it kills me to use styrofoam. But anyway, so we have our Mod Podge ready and now what I like to do is give a very light, light, very light misting to the paper and then put a coat of Mod Podge on it. And then put a coat of Mod Podge on the board. Cut out the middle man. This is a brand new jar of Mod Podge. It's so nice. I was using one the other day that was a little bit old and it was not nearly as nice and smooth as this. So lesson learned, don't let your Mod Podge get old. I picked this one right up at the dollar store for a buck. You can get bigger ones at Walmart, but I was there, I picked it up. Okay, now we are just going to lay this right down on top, line it up. And now at this point, you can use like an old credit card or something to gently smooth it out and get all the bubbles out. This is a, one of my Cricut tools, but honestly, a credit card works just as well. And I just like to get it nice and smooth. And I think that when you spray it with the water first, it helps to make it so there's no bubbles in it. Oh, I'm starting to love this so much. And just because I'm using very understated and muted papers, you know, you can, that's the great thing about this. I'm just showing you a technique. You can use whatever kind of paper you want. You can make it Halloween-y. You can make it the traditional colors of fall, the bright oranges and, you know, greens and purples, whatever. So there's our first one. I'm going to put this aside for a minute because we're not done with it. I'm gonna bring this one over. We're gonna do the same thing. So one of these videos, either a crafting video or a sewing video, I'm not sure yet. You guys know that I am not big into editing. Um, I don't have a really good editing program. I just use the one that came free on my computer. I need to invest in one, I know, but um, I just, 
the investing the money doesn't scare me. It's investing the time to learn how to use it. Because you'd be surprised how long a 15 minute video takes to actually get up. But anyway, I digress. What was I talking about? Oh, one of these sewing or crafting videos, I really want to try doing a voiceover and like speeding through it. Like this will all be fast forward it. And ooh, look at that. We call these glue boogies. I know. Nice, huh? Um, and like doing a voiceover. I am so itching to try that. Even like maybe during a cook with me. I don't know. I don't even know how to do it. I guess I can watch a YouTube video to find out, huh? But until then, you just have to listen to me ramble on and on. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put this one on there, line it all up nice. And then very gently, because don't forget, this paper is wet. Between the water and the Mod Pod, Mod Podge, it's wet. So just very gently, very soft hands. We're just going to smooth it out. Now I'm gonna let these dry, not long, just for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna hit them with the heat gun a little bit. And then I, would, I want to come back and I want to Mod Podge the surface of it. This is a matte finish, which is what I like. I don't want it real shiny, but I like to have the surface of it with the Mod Podge on it because then, I mean, face it, everything in our house gets dusty. That way, when the surface is protected, you can dust it, wipe it, whatever, if it gets dirty. So that's why I like to Mod Podge over top of it also. Plus, it just gives it a really nice finish. So I'm just going to check this one. Yeah, that's almost ready. Just checking for any bumps. Okay, I'm going to just give those about five minutes, and then we'll go over the top of it. So I hit them with my heat gun, and they are almost completely dry. And now I'm just going to... Mod Podge right over the top. It does look cloudy, but it does dry clear. I just make sure with Mod Podge, I go all in the same direction. Nice, even coats, and you don't want it too, too thick. At least I don't. I would rather do two thin coats than one big, thick coat because I like to make sure it's nice and even. Push that one aside. Now, after this, we definitely have to wait until this dries 100% before we move on to the next step. Because we don't want to be touching this and moving it around too much while it's drying because we'll get fingerprints in it. And plus, we actually could rip the paper. So we are going to let this dry for several hours. Before we start putting our fun touches, our embellishments on it. And before we start putting it back together in the stands. A little too much Mod Podge on this one. I'm trying to. There we go. Okay. We're going to let that dry. This is the hardest part. I am not patient. I do not like to wait. I like to start a craft and finish a craft. But I have a ton of sewing to do. So why these dry? I'm going to go hit the sewing machine. Where have you been all my life, Mr. Heat Gun? I never ever thought to use that to dry Mod Podge, to dry paint. It is amazing. Like, I mean, this is literally, we can, we can work with this. It's, it's dry. It's, 
There's a little bit on the back that's not, that's seeped out, but oh my gosh, where have you been all my life heat gun? It is, it's changing my crafting, but I digress. So I'm gonna take the stand that this was on. It's really not an offensive color, but I just wanna give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of dimension. So I am going to dry brush just a little bit of a lighter color on it just to see if we can give it a little something something I have too much paint on my brush here and of course I don't have a paper towel all right just like that a little bit with a dry brush just to give it a little bit of oomph I am using Waverly chalk paint in mineral I love Waverly chalk paint. It has beautiful coverage. It goes on nice. It's just, it's a great product. Unfortunately, I get it at Walmart. And ever since the pandemic, it's really been hard to get. I have not been able to get, like one of my favorite, all time favorite colors in the Waverly chalk paint is Elephant. And I can't get it. Uh, every Walmart that's even remotely near me is sold out and my elephant is almost empty and I'm very sad so there you go you can see it just gives a little bit of dimension a little bit of something something so we're just going to put that to the side and we're going to go back to the pumpkins now there are so many things now we could do with these what to do what to do before I do my final thing. I just want to show you another idea. You can take some of your jute twine or ribbon, whatever it is you like. You can wrap it around. Start in the back, hot glue it down, which I'm not going to because I'm not going to keep it like this. And then just wrap it around like maybe two times, crisscrossing. It's hard when it's not glued like that. And then Dollar Tree sells these teeny tiny little clothespins that are so cute. You can put your little clothespin there and hang a little picture there. Do it on each one of them and maybe like a fall picture of your kids or a fall picture of you and your significant other, something. So that's one thing you could do with this. I'm just going to keep them plain. I just want to embellish them a little bit. So to do that, I am going to use some jute twine and I think some raffia. This is the part where I just sort of start playing. Um, you know, I have a plan in mind, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. I know I want some jute twine up around the stem. But then if I put a bow on, will it cover it? So this is where you just have to start getting creative and start rummaging through your stash or thinking about, you know, what you want the final outcome to look like. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rummage and see what I have and see what I can do. So I think what I want to do is I want to use some raffia. I make some sort of, not a bow, but a embellishment for the top of them. So I'm just going to grab a bunch. I kind of don't care what it looks like right now because I will trim it up and I'm going to tie it off with another piece. Like I said, this is all trial and error. I know what I want. I just don't know if it's going to look right. So we're just going to tie that off. And then we are going to just trim up the ends I like the wild look of raffia but my OCD doesn't let me keep it too wild it has to be neat and tidy I know you're looking at my craft desk going yeah neat and tidy uh-huh and oh I like that I like that a lot okay so we're gonna hot glue that down, but before that, I need some texture on the bottom. So I think I'm gonna do what I talked about with making the picture hanger, but do it on the bottom just for a little bit of 
texture on the bottom. So we're gonna hot glue that down and wrap it around I twice. both my little raffia bows made. I guess it's really not a bow. And they're gonna get hot glued to the top. But before I do that, I want to put a little bit of twine along the bottom, like I said. So I am just gonna take a little bit of hot glue See this cool little thing? This is a little um, finger protector. I was looking all over, Dollar Tree had them, and I was looking all over for them and couldn't find them, and Kim had some extra ones, so Kim sent, some, sent me some, and then I found some at Dollar Tree, but Kim's are much nicer. And it definitely protects those fingers from the hot glue. I'm just going to wind the jute twine around a couple times overlap whoops overlapping it crisscrossing it and i am going to secure it with a little more hot glue just because i do not want it to move i want it where i want it so we're just going to stick a little bit of hot glue just to hold it I want to try to avoid putting it on the front because I'm not going to put anything over this. And just like that, just to give it a little something something. It's not cooperating. It's not cooperating. gonna have to put some more glue on it like I said when you craft you just have to kind of go with the flow and see what happens doesn't matter if the back's a little sloppy I'm just gonna tack it down in a couple places let that dry Takes a few minutes for that glue to set. Oh, I have it at, I have it on high. I didn't mean to put it on high. My glue gun has two settings, high and low, and the high definitely melts it more and takes longer to dry. So we're just gonna switch it down the low. So there we go, just a little bit of jute twine on there for just a little bit of texture. And then we're going to put the bow on top Whoops, a little too much hot glue there. Set that one aside. And then come over to this one and I'm gonna do the exact same thing to this one to make them look similar. I need one of these for each of my fingers because of course the finger that the glue got on not the one that I had the finger protector on I do have several of them so I really could do that I need like a whole glove I'm like Calamity Joan and we're just gonna glue that down the exact same way and you know there's no rhyme or reason just however you like the way it looks. You could use ribbon, you could use pretty much anything you could think of that you like the look of. That's the great thing about this project. It could look completely different for everyone that does it. Completely style it to your house. I think they would look adorable with some buffalo check.
So there we have it. We're going to put the bow on top. I'm not going to use as much hot glue this time. thinking did I want to embellish it you know I thought about a couple different things I thought about putting a chalkboard tag hanging off with like you know happy fall but these are a little too big I thought about um, some of these little pumpkin picks I don't want it too too busy I like simplicity. I like the simplicity of it. Although that does look kind of cute. But I think what I'm going to do is put it back together and then make a decision. And how I'm going to put this together, I'm going to put the smaller, rounder pumpkin. It's getting dark down here. It's getting late. Let's see if we can adjust this lighting a little bit. That's not good. We may have to change our location. I'm going to put this right back in the stand that it came in, but I'm not going to put it right in the middle. Oh, my jute twine is coming loose. Let me just shoot a little hot glue on there. All those professional crafters on YouTube make it look so easy. They never have problems. They're glue sticks. They never almost trace something backwards. They don't have lighting issues. They have gorgeous craft rooms. But that's okay. I like doing it. I enjoy doing it. And in the end, that's all that matters. Right? Right. Okay, I'm making a mess of this jute. I probably should have put it in the stand before I glued the jute on. Or maybe I should have let it dry a little better. Let's try drying it with a heat gun. Although I guess that doesn't make sense because it's hot glue. I told you I am just loving that heat gun. I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes and really dry before I start messing with it anymore and cause more issues. Then I'll come back and we'll put it together. That every time I go to film the air conditioner clicks on. I hope, I hope you can hear me over it. So what I did is I put it back in the little stand, but I put it all the way over to the side because I'm going to take this one and I'm going to hot glue it kind of in the stand with it, if you can see that just a little bit, but I'm going to hot glue it to the back of the one that is in the stand. I'm going to use a crap ton of hot glue. Now you could also use some E6000 if you want a more permanent bond that's not going anywhere. But I can't find my E6000. I lost it in the renovations. I know it's here somewhere. I just have to find it. So I am just gonna hold this until it glues, it bonds, whatever. I think this lighting is really bad. This may be the first and last time we're filming down in the craft room unless I can figure out something with the lights. I'm going to lay this face down and let that, let that bond together. And then 
we'll see if we want to put any finishing touches on it so there it is i absolutely love it but while i was waiting for the glue to dry i found these really cute berries and i thought that maybe they would really look adorable in there so i think i'm going to stick them in there just shove in some hot glue and you know if i end up not liking them it's only hot glue it's not permanent i can pull them out i just want to make sure i get the green stem behind the pumpkin not in front of it and then i'm going to manipulate the berries up a little bit and glue those down. I just felt like it needed something, something. I tried some greenery on there while it was drying and I didn't care for the green. I tried a little bit of boxwood. I tried a little bit of lamb's ear. Um, I had some really cute daisy flowers, but they were just not the right color. They were a little too orangey. That's one of the reasons I like these berries because they have a, a little bit more of a brownish reddish tone. So I thought they would complement a little bit better. So I'm just adhering those down so they don't look too wonky and wild. get all those glue boogies off now if you like you can take um, a lighter and go lightly over the jute string and that will get rid of all the little um, hairs on it but I kind of like those on this because it's so rustic looking now I also was thinking about I'm not sure I have these really cute little pumpkins I just didn't know if it was too much putting like two little pumpkins there I don't think I like them. I think I'll leave them off for now. So there you have it. Let's see what this looks like up on my table. So there you have it. The first of, I hope, several um, little craft videos between Kim and myself. This was a lot of fun. I had a good time. I cannot wait to see Kim's. We decided we were not going to show each other. So she doesn't know what mine looks like. I don't know what hers looks like. And I'm not going to find out until these videos premiere. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys like this. It was a little something different. Like I said, we have lives outside of WW. And, you know, we like to share those with you. So... I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments below if you like to craft. Let me know if you are making any fall decor. Um, I plan on making several more things. Um, not sure what. You saw those awesome calendars I bought at Dollar Tree. I'm really hoping to make very simple, simple decor items with those, especially that one that said pumpkin patch and it was the white pumpkin. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with that. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think. And like I said, not a competition, not even a little bit. We just wanted to bring you different ways to use different Dollar Tree items. So if you like this, let us know and we will love to do another one. At least I think Kim would, but I'm speaking for her. So it's okay. Tell her you want another one. She'll listen to you. So thanks again for watching. Have a fantastic day and I will see you soon.